morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Legendary. It is Wednesday. Got to look at the date, April 10th. It's nice and bright and early for me over on the West Coast. So it's a lovely 7 a.m. Pacific time. <laughs> um, I hope everyone is having a fantastic morning, afternoon, wherever you're joining us from at this point, whether you're joining us live or checking out the replay. Um, happy Wednesday. So for those that are new here, my name is Joanne. I am the Director of Marketing here at Legendary Marketer. And every now and then I get to hop in and fill in for the amazing Dave Sharp. Um, and I am pumped for today's guest. I'm super excited for you to meet him um, because he's been around online for a while, which I think is really cool. Um, and there's going to be a lot of experience that's going to be shared. You're going to have a really good insight of what he can correct me. I believe almost 10 years online looks like what that journey looks like. The ups, downs, left, rights, everything in between. Um, so he is going to be a wealth of knowledge, um, which is really cool to really have that insight of what an online business can look like down the line and all of that good stuff. But before I bring him on, a few housekeeping items. If you would like to get a text notification of when we go live Monday through Friday, and mine just came in on my phone, text the letters WUL to 813-296-8553. Um, once again, all you do is text those letters. Every now and then somebody wants to add in, join Wake Up Legendary, spell it out. It won't opt you in at that point. So just text the letters WUL to 813-296-8553. Five, five, three. And if you are just checking us out, seeing what we're all about um, and curious about what our education products, we have a few of them right here at legendarymarketer.com slash enroll. You can join the challenge, come to a mastermind, grab the affiliate marketing blueprint, all at that link. So go check that out. All right. I see our room is filling up. I'm getting all good mornings from our regulars and some new names that I see as well. Um, so let's welcome Markins to the show. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Joanne. Welcome. I'm so excited to be here. I'm, every guest does fill out a little questionnaire. So I got to get a little peek with what your story is. Um, but share with all of us when you when you started online and why you started online to begin with. So yeah, I actually started back in 2014, and uh, ironically, I actually was on Facebook. I was telling you the story. I was on Facebook one day, and I was actually getting ready to delete my Facebook. I was really much of a social media person. Okay. And I've seen this guy talking about he's making a bunch of money on social media, right? Uh, I go to his profile. He's like next to like all these luxury cars. At the time, I was working as a pools tech. And I'm like, there's no way that this is real. Like this has to be like a scam or something, right? Mm -hmm. so I go to his profile and, you know, just checking it out and whatnot. And, you know, I'm like, hey, what's the worst that can happen? Let me ask him for certain information. Uh, I get some info and I'm like, ah, forget about it. Then two weeks later, he actually like follows up with me and he's like, hey, I guess you weren't serious about this. And I'm like, <laughs> my pride kind of like comes up. I'm like, yeah, I was serious. Like, what do you mean I'm not serious? So it kind of like got me back interested in looking into it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he was like selling a program at the time and decided to get started, got into the program. And after I bought it, he actually like just disappeared on me and didn't <laughs> reply to my messages anymore. It was like a $40 program. And uh, after I got started, you know, that kind of like started my journey into uh, this whole space. And that was more of a, like a direct sales. So it wasn't mm -hmm. really like, but it was like direct sales doing using Facebook. Yeah. I remember when I first got started. I went out and I tried to like post on Facebook to tell people about it. And of course, nobody replied because they know what I was doing at all. Right. Like right. my first post, I was like, hey, I joined this thing and you can make a lot of money. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Which would not be compliant, guys, at this point right. and probably not at that time either. But yeah. yeah. But it's kind of like, you know, the growing pains of you not knowing how to market, how to actually message things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, from there, I just told a couple of my friends about it. And, you know, I actually ended up having one person that decided to like buy the program, or whatever. And I made some money and it kind of like just opened my eyes, like, oh, wow, like you could actually 
learn how to make an income using the internet, right? Right. From that point, about eight months down the road, I was just like pretty much struggling, buying different courses, ah. different trainings, like not making much money, still working my job. Uh, and honestly, it just was like, uh, it just was, 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 was really a mental battle, honestly. I was yeah. just trying to. So I think a lot of people in our community that watch the show, they, they, there, there is that phase where, mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe it's it's kind of stuck in fear. Maybe it's stuck in overwhelm. Um, looking for the secret, like the more if I buy more courses, I'll be mm-hmm. better. But yeah. you're not actually following through fully. Mm-hmm. Usually you're just buying another course and then another course and you're yeah. another course. But if you really looked at the action mm. that you're taking regularly, um, it's not there. Does that relate to you? Do you feel like you were stuck in that mode during that time? A hundred percent. I think more so like I didn't know what actions to actually take because I was brand I was like I was pretty new. And then even that too is like I was kind of look for that that secret. Or right? everybody has that. There's a right. secret that I don't know that that's why these people are having success. I just don't know the secret. Or I don't have to feel the pain. The yeah. pain. I'm going to go on camera so I don't have to feel the overwhelm. So I don't have to have worry. So I don't have to have, you know, that people are going to judge me or mm. I'm gonna look amazing and have a million followers with my first video. Yeah. Like you get, like I, I can skip that part of the journey, but you can't. And buying more courses won't get you through that part. You have to grow a page from zero. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So yeah, so from about 2014 up until about 2016, that's when I probably, I think like 2016 I had my first really big breakthrough. Mm-hmm. And that's when I started to figure out how to actually build a funnel. Like I didn't know what a funnel actually was, but after like doing research and then kind of like seeing if it was having success and then modeling after what they were doing, I started kind of putting, putting the pieces together over right. the course of about a year or two. Mm-hmm. And like what a landing page was, like the importance of an email list, right? That you have to get traffic. Like these are the things that are important to, to you know, have a successful business. So right. I started, you know, build those things. I started to put those pieces together is when I had like, my first big success. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't want to talk about like income claims, but it kind of, it gave me like the freedom that I need to be able to find success online, I would say. Right, so keep going, right? At some point, there has to be some type, you are building a business and there there is, an exchange going on at some point yeah. but it, i really what you just said is you stopped focusing on hey I've, i have a, a link to something mm-hmm. i just stopped focusing on plastering that out and focused on building your following building mm-hmm. your community learning the skills funnels auto responders landing pages copy on your landing pages all of those little pieces is once you started focusing on that, mm-hmm. things changed for you and your business. Exactly. Right. And and I, I and you said over a couple years it took <laughs> that process to take. That wasn't in a month that you you went through that. You went through that back in the day over a couple years. And yeah. Yeah. That's a journey. How how was your mindset as you kept pushing through that? Honestly, it was it was tough. Like there was many times that I wanted to give up, but it was like my why was like I didn't want to work a job. I didn't want to go to school. Like I did I did a semester, I did a half a semester of college and I dropped out because like it wasn't for me. My brother, like uh I have a brother that's like six years older than me. And just watching him growing up, like he would go to work, come home, study, go to work home. That'd be like his whole life. And I was like, I didn't want that. Right. Right. So right. that's what draw me to this. And uh what will really help me out, like kind of push me through the journey is I'd actually wake up in the morning and I'd listen to motivational speakings. I was like Les Brown, mm-hmm. like that. And I remember during the time too, cause I was like, my parents always wanted me to go to school. And I was afraid to tell them that I didn't want to go to school. So there became a point where I actually just stopped going to class and I'd go park in a parking lot somewhere and just listen to like Les Brown for like two, three hours and then come back home. Like I was so <laughs> cool, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that though. I mean, it, it, mindset is huge and yeah. it's a lot of um, upkeep for mm-hmm. your mind 
mindset to keep going through that process to decide I got to do something different. Like I want to be online. I see people that are successful online yeah. that are making something out of it, that are doing it in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So you got to learn how to do it. And, and I love how once you decided to focus on all the steps and the process and learning how to marketing actually works, that's when you saw breakthroughs. That's when, and you kept working on your mindset to get through that almost two year period mm -hmm. to help continue your growth of both, which is huge. And guys, for anyone joining now, he started online in 2014. So we are talking to a gentleman who has been in the online space for 10 years at this point. Um, and he's sharing his journey, his process and all of that good stuff. Um, at the beginning and what those first few years look like and it, it how, what's your advice for someone that's just focused on an outcome like i have to i have to blast income claims everywhere which you don't and you shouldn't because it's not compliant because they're so focused on an outcome as that's the way you have to market when really it needs to be about the process about what it can bring you, what it can bring you in the future. Um, talk, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, I think definitely that was like one of my biggest hindrances too. It was like when I first started off, I was always focused on that end result. But as mm -hmm. I started to really, you know, mature and learn, start to learn that actually like the, the all the fun is actually in the journey itself, right? Yeah. It's like actual learning the skill sets, and that's actually what gets you the end results. So most people like they like to focus on. I want to get to this point where they'll see somebody else and they're comparing themselves to other people. Like, Hey, I, I want to be like, but they don't actually get to see like the behind the scenes, like what they did to get there. Right. So right. Always, the thing you can really focus on is the copywriting, the content creation, uh, how to find your right audience, how to build that brand. Right. Cause that's the thing that's actually going to get you the results that you want. And the more you focus and hone in on crafting your skills and becoming a better marketer, the, 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 the more success you're going to have. But the more you actually focus on the actual end result, the less you'll focus on actually the skills. It's kind of like a the end the result comes, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's funny. It's it's just something that evolves. And now, when you focus on the process, when you focus on building a community, when you focus on building a following, and guys, Markins know how to build a following. He's well over four hundred thousand, close to five hundred thousand on Instagram right now followers and he's been in this for almost 10 years so he's put in the time he's put in the work he's built a community that is active um and follows him um and and that's what gives you the longevity and i think a lot of people starting out forget the longevity piece mm -hmm. what are you going to have online a year from now two years from now five years, 10 years with what roots you're placing, the seeds you're planting right now. Really think about that. Like, what are the seeds you're planting to get to 500,000 followers? And I'm already seeing the question. So what's the secret to get to 500,000 followers? <laughs> I think honestly, it's just going through trial and error. Like it's not it's not sexy. A lot of people don't like the like, you know, it wasn't like just an overnight type of thing. Like my first month, I think I had maybe 200 followers mm -hmm. and it was just more so like doing a lot of research, seeing what was working out there, seeing how I could kind of like remodel it for my own, like kind of say to my own way. You know, because the cool thing about social media, especially like with Reels, is that many people could say like the same message, but it's, it comes out different because it's coming from somebody else. Mm -hmm. so it's like I can say the same thing. You can say the same thing. And it sounds completely different because we're not the same. We're not the same people. Right. 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 Like you kind of got to, number one, see what's working out there because you don't have to go out there and reinvent the wheel. But also you got to figure out how to say it in your own unique style that's going to work for you. And that only comes through rep repetition and practice over time. Right. Yeah. And testing. You got to test out different things. You got to be able to look at yourself and critique yourself. Yeah. With being a bully to yourself and being down and then not taking action because you're like, oh, that video sucked. You got to be like, yeah, that video sucked. What do I need to change next time? Mm -hmm. And then go do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's definitely it. You have got to be like more of an analytical type of person. It's kind of like because what, what I did was after like my first about 50 posts, I'd go back and see like, OK, what worked in this one? 
what worked in that one. So let me do more of that. Let me do less of this. This one didn't work very well. And it's kind of like the game overall in, in marketing and in this space, mm -hmm. really like just analyzing, seeing what you can do better, what you can improve on, uh, and just kind of building on that. Yeah. And if you look at analytics every day, like just the video from yesterday, it's too close. Yeah, you can keep going and be consistent. And then every 15 days, every 30 days, go back and see where your peaks are. I mm -hmm. mean, little peaks of, of more views. Well, why did that one get a few more views? And start noting that noting what was in it, what type of hook, how was it filmed? What it what audio was used? Was it text on screen? Was it all in the caption? And then you do the same with another video that may have peaked and had a few more views what are the similarities between those two? All right, let me try some more videos that are like these two. What was the topic? What was the value? And really going through of that, that's what analyzing and testing content is. But you can't do it unless you have a big group of content to be able to look at which means you got to show up every day, which means you got to post every day and then have that time to allow views and be able to compare things. Um, sometimes we have people that are like, okay, I've been posting a week. I have five yeah. videos. <laughs> um, I don't have 5,000 followers yet. What am I doing wrong? And it's like, nothing. You don't got enough sweat, sweat equity yet. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That is like the best one yet. I love that. That's right. You don't have enough sweat equity. Yeah. Yes, put in enough work. There's not enough time. I love that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, it's definitely been a it's, it's definitely been a a great journey. Like it, like this journey it definitely helps you grow as a person. Like it's not just about the business, but it's amazing to see like who you become over time, right? Because it's like certain skills you start to. Even as I look back, I'm like, man, like looking back to myself ten years ago, like. I couldn't speak as well. I couldn't record videos as well. I was like even even certain things just starting to learn like different skills with different softwares and whatnot. Cause I use a lot of cap cut and things like that. And you just develop all these skills that you don't know. And then over time you're kind of like, wow, I learned all this stuff. I'll become this person. Yeah, you just don't realize it. I mean, I actually it was a couple months ago. I logged into I went and looked at the first funnel I built in ClickFunnels way back in the day. And I remember the feeling of, of pride. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I went back and I looked at that funnel and I was like, holy shit, what a piece of crap. <laughs> 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 but you, you know, cause there's been so many years of journey mm -hmm. of uh, application of practice of mm -hmm. putting into your craft and getting better. Um, but in that moment, that pride of that was really good. And that's what it was something that I had accomplished and you keep going and you keep going. And, and those are all about celebrating those small wins. Um, and you just can't see your progress when you look at short term, but you can over time with long term. Mm -hmm. right? And I, I think that would be a similar story for everyone. You can look back at your first videos and you, you would be like, wow, I thought that was really good back then. Yeah. <laughs> good job for me. I'm glad I've progressed. Right. Um, but it takes time and energy and effort to grow your craft and get better at it. And every single person goes through that. Every single one of us. Um, and just like you shared, you took time to really learn about building landing pages and, and all that tech side and that, that piece of it. And that was important to your growth as well, which is just really cool. So when did you land at legendary? Yeah. So what ended up happening, uh, kind of long story short is that through some bad decisions, I ended up having to like get a job after not working a job for 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, some bad life decisions made me go back into a job and I actually was scrolling on my wife was actually scrolling on Instagram and she saw one of your affiliates mm -hmm. and I was like what like and she's talking about how she's had the success you know and I was like uh, I've been doing this like let me look at the time I was actually a media buyer and I came across a mm -hmm. and I was like oh let me check this out then I kind of seen a 15 day challenge what you guys were offering and I was kind of blown away because I was like I believe you spent thousands of dollars on the training that you guys are doing for seven bucks Right. I know. And it's so, like, I don't know why people, it, it's 
it's so solid for seven bucks. It's bad. It they have it's no awesome idea. Enough. It like, really is. <laughs> especially like being somebody's been in this for 10 years. Like people used to sell courses on just funnel building for like 2500 mm -hmm. Or just how to even make a like, you know, email marketing training used to be like five thousand dollars. And that's yeah, not even I feel, like, I feel like email marketing and copy was five, ten grand yeah. back in the day. It just was really really mm -hmm. high ticket wild. Um so that's why when I just seen like the course that you guys are offering for the price, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a steal. Like I've done spent so much money over this. If I had this starting off, this would have saved me years of time. So yeah, I came across legendary, saw that, and I was like, yeah, I definitely gotta get on this because I'm like, number one, the training is solid. And then just seeing like the success mm -hmm. people were having with the testimonials. Because of course, like you want to see other people actually having success before you hop onto something. So you know, if the product is good and it's getting people results, it's like, all right, I feel good about offering this to people because I know that they're actually giving value out there. You know? Right, right. And that's what's, you know, overall, that's really important. That's what our focus is too, as an education company is making sure everyone has the right expectations. They understand the value that's in the education um, mm -hmm. and what the process looks like. And I love it from your point of view because you, you, you went the hard road to learn these skills mm -hmm. outside of legendary, but you're able to go through and go into the challenge and go, holy crap, this is this is solid training because you know what it takes. Yeah. You know what was included, which is really it's really cool. Um, you have that insight and viewpoint. So exactly. I appreciate you sharing that. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you know, people can be an affiliate for legendary and not purchase any products at all. Um, because they are separate programs, but it was nice that you were able to go and take a, you know, you had the challenge, you went through it, you checked it out, um, and able to really confirm what that is and what that looks like, which is, which is cool. And yeah. Be proud of it. Exactly. And that it will help other people, which is always nice for sure. So what's your advice for someone right now, just starting out? I say focus on mastering the skills. Like, don't think about the end result. Just focus on getting better at the skills. Focus on getting better at the copywriting. Focus on getting better at your content creation, your messaging, right? Mm -hmm. Do daily analysis. Like, start going out and looking out. You know, try to find what's working in your niche on social media. Uh, mm -hmm. See what people are doing that you could start doing, right? And don't be afraid to fail. Like, don't look at everything as a failure. It's a, I see every failure is, is opportunity for you to learn. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I think every every entrepreneur is they get to where they're at through failure. But I think like through schooling and things like that, we've started to look at failure as like a bad thing. And really it's like, no, it's a way for you to actually learn, for you to actually get your hands to things. Right. I think like most of the things I've learned, like 80% has been from actually doing instead of like watching a course. I get some stuff from a course, but it's something you just won't learn from a course that when you actually go out there and do that, you actually start to learn from. If that makes sense. Yeah, and it's huge. I, I I truly believe the best way to get going is to learn, do, learn, do, learn, do. Don't try to go through an entire course, a drop of action. Yeah. It, it'll, you'll end the course and be like, okay, now where do I start again? <laughs> exactly. You gotta go back to the start of the course. And now as you go back through it, I want you to implement. Mm -hmm. um, and it really is about, releasing perfection, releasing this idea of failure as bad. Failure is just a moment. It's not a identity. Mm -hmm. You're not a failure. This thing I tried didn't work out, but I learned this, this, and this. And now today I'm going to do this, this, and this different. Exactly. Yeah. I think like even honestly, like there's no, person out there, especially in entrepreneurship, that has it all figured out. That's why we're always changing things and trying new things, right? Nobody has like right. this puzzle has the complete thing figured out. Like even from the most successful person like Elon Musk, like if he had it all figured out, he wouldn't still be trying out new things and trying to get better. You know right, and <laughs> right before our eyes he still has things that fail or fail yeah. <laughs> or don't go the way he wants. Um yeah. Still, he's doing a lot of testing all the time, and that's the only way it improves. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's what's hard to overcome. There is no shortcut to avoiding going through it. 
Exactly. There just isn't. And there is no course out there, no matter what somebody says, that is instantly going to have money falling from the sky in five days. Yeah. <laughs> you have to go through the process. You have to go through the growth stage. You have to go through learning the skills. You have to go through starting an account at zero and growing it learning how to communicate, learning how to build engagement, learning how to create videos. Um, and I, for some that may feel like, oh, that's a lot of work. But I'm like, oh, for me, it's freaking fun. It yeah. never felt like work. It still doesn't feel like work. I love it. <laughs> right? Um, you got to kind of embrace the learn implement process. Mm -hmm. It's cool. What? Yep. How would you, when you hear me say that, what is it for you that comes up? Was it fun for you? Was it hard? Were there days where you had to be like, oh, I got to show up and I am not in the mood? How did, how did that work for you? Oh, yeah, definitely. There's many a times, like even when I first started off that I wanted to quit. And that's why I had to do like the motivate, listen to the motivational stuff in the morning and things like that. You know, mm -hmm. there's many days where I wake up and I'm like, even up until this point where I'm like, oh my gosh, like. I got to kind of drag myself out of bed. I'm like, man, my videos aren't doing like I, as good as I want them to do. I'm going to get as many leads as I want, you know, but then I got to kind of talk myself out of it. Like, hey, just put in the work and then just go from there. As long as being consistent and put it into work, that's all you can control. Everything else is out of your hands, you know? Yeah, totally. I get that. So let's go back to Instagram. Give us some tips, some advice. Let's do a little mini masterclass on growing Instagram. So say you have a group in front of you right now of zero, they all have an Instagram account with zero to 20 followers, <laughs> maybe two videos posted. What's your advice? <laughs> well, I would say right now you need to start being way more consistent, like start doing at least when I first started, I was doing at least one to three videos a day. I noticed when I was doing like three videos a day. I started getting way more traction. Uh, Another huge thing is just making sure that your hooks are very good. Start looking at what kind of hooks grab your attention in your niche. Like I'd actually go out and look at if you're like, let's say your niche was, I don't know, dog treats. I'd go on Instagram, look up dog treats and see what pops up on the explore page. Whatever videos are going viral, I'd start to see, hey, what kind of hooks did they use? How can I use that hook? Mm -hmm. Right? Sounds that they're using, right? Sounds is a huge part of uh, Instagram. They love when you're using trending sounds. So I definitely start looking at that. Uh, hashtags as well. One thing about hashtags that I noticed is that if you're using, they have like kind of a sweet spot for the hashtags. I don't want to give an exact number because I don't want to mess anybody up. But I don't say it's like kind of like a sweet spot in numbers of hashtags that a lot of people use. And I kind of just look at that and go from there. And it's kind of like trial and error, changing up your hooks, seeing how you can kind of stop people's attention. Especially in this era too with social media, you kind of have like three seconds to capture somebody's attention before they're like on to the next thing. So you kind of got to figure out like, okay, how can I do something very impactful in that first three seconds, whether it's like the text on screen, what I'm doing. Like I noticed like if I was pointing at something that actually stopped people, mm -hmm. uh, the color of my text that played a part into it. Mm -hmm. So we just thought of trial and error and seeing like what's, what's uh, grabbing people's attention. Right. And guys, I want you to listen to this because he's dropping some major gold. But here's what I need you all to really grasp. I for him, he could say pointing and we'll say a certain color, but through trial and error, if I only use his color of text, <laughs> yeah. I may find my following doesn't like that. Mm -hmm. But if I test a different color, that could change everything for me. That's where the testing comes in. And that's where those variations of audience come in that you have to find what works with your audience. And it's, it's hard to explain, but that's the reality of it is there's some people that just can, their following just responds better to a certain style of video. And you won't know what responds with your growing audience until you test them all out and test different things and then test them over and over and start seeing what the pattern is. You know, that's 100% right. That definitely is what it is. Cause I think it's, uh, as you're growing your phone, people people are, are following you because they they feel like they know you, they like you, they trust you. That's who they want to do business with. So the more they know, like, and trust you, the more they're going to do business with you. And it's kind of like, as you see what they're resonating to, what they like is give them more of that, right? Because it's more so about serving them and what they want. It's not about you, what you want to do. Mm 
about being able to help people and give them what they want. So the more you do that, the more you're going to get what you want. Right. It's that ego. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you have to share your story and connect, but it's doing it in a way to serve. And that take practice to be able to do it. <laughs> um, and it, it really it does. The focus needs to be about your ideal follower mm -hmm. and find, you know, and connecting with their pain points, connecting with their desires, connecting with their personality with yours, which is why it's good to not hide who you are online. It's a whole lot easier to show up every day if you're not pretending to be somebody else or pretending to be this certain persona online. You'll have way more fun in your content. That personality will come out and then you'll find a whole community that are your people that you love to wake up and make more content for because they're just like you. They connect with you. They're excited to see you. But when you're trying to be someone else that you think you need to be, it, it, it comes across stiff. It comes across unauthentic. And you'll find that your following isn't really growing. People can see it on camera, whether you realize it or not. <laughs> How, yeah. Have you gone through that stage where you're like, I have to be this online? But once uh, you release it, or have you always shown up and just been your authentic, awesome self? No, definitely. I think like, because when we, because the easiest thing to do is just copy other people, right? You want to go there and be like, okay, it's working for them. I'm just going to do the exact same thing. Right. And that's why I said, like, it's, you kind of can, you can use it as a model, but you don't want to copy. Because right. when you just copy, they're like, all right, you, you come off robotic. But it's more, when it's more just you being yourself and you're modeling something, mm -hmm. it becomes off like more more authentic. You know, like even a lot of people that's followed me, they message me and they're like, yeah, like, yeah. I love the way you're, you're on video. And I'm like, really? Like, I'm just being, regular they're like yeah you have so much energy you know and i'm like oh, i don't know but yeah it's just me being more myself and when i put more of my story into it more of my emotion into it people just connect with it more because we just want to connect with them right yeah all right we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep going and i'm gonna even put this question on the screen because this is a great one if you're new and not selling they're focused on growing an account how do you give them quality content to get them to follow you so I mean, you gotta kind of you gotta consider who your target audience is and what they're looking for, and giving them solutions to their problems because that's what they really want. Like if you give them solutions to their problems, you don't have to sell anything, right? It's like it's like when I, I tell people like if you go on uh, when you go on YouTube, right, and you look up something like, hey, how do I fix my broken dish or something like, or my my broken sink or something like that, right? And somebody helps you on that. If they recommend you a product, you're probably gonna be more likely to buy because it, it just helped you out. Mm -hmm. kind of built that authority and that trust with you just by virtue of helping you out and they didn't try to sell you anything i think when you come off selly when you come off like trying to sell people it actually makes it worse because now they're like oh no like this is like that, that car sale you want me to buy something it doesn't really care about me if that makes right? sense yeah i've used this silly analogy and for parents out there you definitely get it you're at your kids sporting event we'll say baseball practice mm -hmm. And there, sometimes there's that team mom, they only want to talk to you when they want something, volunteer, money, work the snack bar, donate something. That's the only time they talk to you. You see them coming, you're already like, oh, yeah. <laughs> here they come. You're, you're closed off. You have, they don't, there's no, you, it just, you see them coming. And when you see that online, as you're scrolling, you're like, heck no, I'm out. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. But you could be sitting at the same practice in a group with other parents and you're all relating because you have kids the same age. You're sharing stories. That's value of what happened last night at dinner. And everyone's going, oh, my God, that happened to me last week. Mm -hmm. You're sharing pain points. You're sharing what you wish, what you desire. And somebody could be like. Some dad could be like, oh, I found the best gardener. I now have the best grass on the street. It's amazing. And all of a sudden, another dad in that circle, what's his name? Love his contact information. He just recommended that. And now this gardener has like four different people because this one guy built connection of the group, yeah. offered a problem to solve, and was able to recommend to people that know, like, and trusted him. Exactly. But if that other person, mom, who only goes for the ask one day went, hey, I have a gardener for you. You're not going to use them. You're out. You're like, I don't trust you. 
What do you want from me? What are you getting out of it? <laughs> <laughs> right? But you're going to, the person you're sitting with in a circle, conversing and growing a relationship with, that's what you do online. So your content is, how do I make online friends and grow a connection? Exactly. Like-minded people. What will they relate to? What stage of life are they in? What pain points do they have? And eventually that grows and you're able to then make recommendations that they trust and click on. Yeah, definitely. I think even to like not being afraid to share your story and be vulnerable. Like, hey, I'm starting yeah. this thing and this is what I've learned so far. And I haven't had any success yet, but I'm going to, you know, like things like that. Like, people kind of feel like they have to portray this thing of like, I am a super successful person. But it's like, no, people actually like authenticity. And they like it if they know that you're actually trying something new and you're having failures, you're still going, right? They might be like, oh, wow, I wonder what she's learning. And then they'll look into your thing. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's have fun with it. You're online. Social is meant to be social on social yeah. Right, you gotta enjoy it. <laughs> it can't be all business. All right, guys, I got this link. We're gonna go over here and click it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I love> that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I think it's important to find what's fun for you, and everyone's gonna have different interests of what's fun, and what's you know, and your personalities are all different, just like everyone has a different type of group of friends and, and different people that they connect with. And it's this online, um, which is really cool. So I hope that helps everyone start actually seeing the strategy behind growing a channel. Um, and it can't be going out blazing with selling because then you're just a door to door salesman online. And no one's going to respond to that. Exactly. You got to be the gut, the neighbor outside, making friends, shaking hands, and kissing babies, as they yes. like to say. <laughs> right? Oh, which I love. All right, this has been fantastic. What is anything that we missed today that you want to be able to share through your experience of ten years online, through the ups, downs, lefts, rights? What's something that you've really learned about yourself through this journey that you could share with everyone? Uh, that you just got to be persistent, honestly. You mm -hmm. just kind of got to know that you're going to make it before you make it. You kind of have the, you have to have the vision of where you're going to be before you get there. If that makes sense. Right. And just wherever you're at, you're at today, just know that if you stay consistent and you put in the work that you could be a lot farther than you would ever imagine you'd be in like a year from now. But just give yourself that time. Like, don't look at it as a next week or next month type of thing. Like, plan yourself out for where am I going to be at a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. Because you know, I think, like, one of the greatest things a lot of successful people have is that delayed gratification, right? They're not looking for someone to be successful tomorrow. But I think, like, even Jeff Bezos, what was it like? He started Amazon back in early 2000 and see success for that for like 10, 20 years. Yeah. So, it's like the same thing. It's just, yeah, it, it's holding the, the long-term vision, but taking the baby steps each day mm -hmm. on the path that goes there. If you focus only on the long-term vision, you won't get anywhere. Um, but you also need to have that vision too in place and then put your focus of what actions you take today on what you need to take today to start on those baby steps towards that, to get a little closer, a little closer, a little closer, a little closer, a little closer. Yep. Yeah. It's all daily action. Yeah, I love it. Well, this has been a fantastic interview, Markins. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, and you dropped a ton, a ton of advice boulders of gold and uh, go back guys and rewatch this, write it all down and start letting your creative mind sink it in and apply to your ideal audience, to your niche, to your offers um, and start thinking about how you can grow friends online. Cause that's really the, the, the goal. That's really where your focus needs to be to get and bring in those followers. Cause we can't recommend anything to an empty room or an empty social account. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you. And you'll definitely need to come back. Marcus. All right, thank you for having me. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys, you can go follow.
Markins on Instagram at Make Money with Markins, all connected, all spelled out, no periods, no dashes, no, no nothing. Um, just make money with Markins on Instagram. Go give him a follow. Let him know that you saw him on Wake Up Legendary. And we are back tomorrow with another guest. And then we have Friday. And I'm so pumped for Friday because it's decade in a day. And I missed the last one. Um, I was out of office and I it's one of my favorite days ever. We do them, you know, twice a month and I can't wait to be back on Decade in a Day. So if you are a Blueprints member and not registered for Friday, we'll be with Ryan and I and we are pumped already. I can tell you, I'm excited. I can't wait. As always, stay legendary and we will see you tomorrow. Peace.